Seven consecutive home games with four plus goals against. That stat summarizes the current state of the Toronto Maple Leafs. And that is an absolute disaster. To be blunt, they are a defensive mess. And right now, even the coach thinks it's gotten out of control. The Leafs have been trying to outscore their problems for years. But when it is this bad, there's no way they can outrun this problem. In typical Toronto Maple Leaf fashion, the team is treading water to survive. With a mediocre 6-5-2 record and an ugly 6-3 loss to the Ottawa Senators, the coach and all of Leaf Nation are extremely concerned about the state of this team. The Leafs' record is more favorable to them than it looks, and it's because their big boys can outscore some of their problems. Because the truth is that this ugly defensive play has been going on since day one of the season. The Leafs and their fans were on the edge of a total meltdown the other night when they went down 4-1 to Tampa in the first and got booed off the ice. If it wasn't for Matthews, Marner, and Nyes putting on an offensive clinic, this entire conversation would have been held after that game. But instead, this conversation happens after the loss to Ottawa. Coach Sheldon Keefe knows it as well, as he highlighted the fact that no one talks about how much they've given up due to their offense consistently bailing them out. So what the hell is going on here and why exactly do the Leafs suck right now? Well, there are three reasons that have plagued this team since the start of the season. Inconsistent goaltending, complete mental lapses on the defensive side of the puck, and very little scoring depth. The last two games between Ottawa and Tampa show all of these issues, yet they have different results. Against Tampa, this first goal will make any coach or fan want to soak their eyes in bleach. But the Leafs want to play a 1-1-3 to avoid odd man rushes against a deadly Tampa team. On the first goal, the Leafs get a forward caught up too high, instantly putting them behind the eight ball off the rush. Point crosses the blue line, the D give them that line way too easily, I mean just look at that gap, and then a brilliant look by Kucherov finds the active D which is Hedman. Now enter inconsistent goaltending. On this angle, you would like your goalie to make this save. Actually, after you just scored the first goal of the game and know that your team's confidence is struggling, you actually need a save here. Instead, Samsonov gets moving a little too much in his crease while sliding across, and it's a weak goal against for the Leafs. It's not one person's fault, it's the entire five-man unit making mistakes that eventually snowball into these grade-A chances against. That will be a theme here, because not even a few minutes later, the mental lapses continue yet again. Leafs are once again in a 1-1-3, but with Tavares being the third forward back to support, he gets caught a little too high up in the neutral zone and flat-footed to boot. A simple chip past him advances the play, and that leaves Nylander as the forward back to now provide support. Tavares can't do anything to slow up the Tampa attacker, and now Klingberg has to back off and respect the speed, but his gap is just way too big. Nylander defaults back to the slot without picking up Kucherov, and another cause and effect moment leaves Tampa all this time to make a cross ice play, and yet again, not the prettiest goal against for Samsonov. But this goes to show you how quickly things can get ugly if you aren't executing or have good structure. Luckily for the Leafs, the top dogs provided some much needed offense, and some depth scoring from Yarncroke gave them the win. Now against Ottawa, they weren't as fortunate. Captain John Tavares summed it up perfectly in the post game, saying that there was just way too many mistakes. Jack Han is a great follow on Twitter, and he pointed out how this one mistake snowballed against Toronto. On Ottawa's go-ahead goal, here's a 200-foot breakdown in a matter of seconds. Both Reeves and Camp are fighting for the puck in the corner, and Ottawa gets the puck off the wall and beats both Camp and Reeves with one pass. With Camp and Reeves caught too deep, Toronto has no choice but to play a 1-1-3, with Gregor getting back to help his D-men. Klingberg here is trying to bat down a hard, hip-level dump-in rather than defending an opposing player. A low percentage play he just doesn't need to make. Gregor in the middle tries to protect his D-man by getting back early and picking up the Ottawa player even if it is not his job. Ottawa beats out the icing call and the snowball continues. When the puck goes below the goal line, either both Ds go or neither goes. Klingberg goes, but Giordano doesn't. Ottawa changes sides, and Klingberg can't anticipate it fast enough. Consequently, Camp collapses to the net to protect his D, 
Gregor has already over collapsed trying to protect Klingberg on the entry and now you got four guys within two feet of each other and Chikrin is on the doorstep just licking his chops for a grade A chance. Wall has had some solid flashes for the Leafs but again this isn't his prettiest work either. When you're having trouble defending it is easy to just look at the D and point the finger but defending in the NHL is a five man operation and the game happens so fast that one mistake can escalate and the consequence of other players trying to compensate for that mistake ends up in a goal against. In the third period, Toronto proceeded to let in three goals in three minutes and 17 seconds. And again, it's just tiny mistakes. The Leafs are down by one, Toronto's trying to push the pace by sending two four checkers, and Tavares has to be the guy to play a little bit more conservative to make sure he isn't caught too much up the ice. The Ottawa defender makes a great heads up play off the wall, realizing he's got all three Leaf forwards in too deep, and with one pass, it's an odd man rush. A simple little lapse made by a forward ends up in the back of the net. Great team defense involves all five players working like a well-oiled machine in all three zones. It doesn't just start and end in the defensive zone. Whether it's communication, personnel, or the wrong system for this group, things just aren't working out right now. And whenever that's the case in Toronto, people are quick and loud when pointing the finger. This is just the X's and O's side of the game. That doesn't even include the confidence levels of different players, how they deal with pressure, making mistakes, new systems, and all kinds of different coaching styles. The Leafs can still figure this out, but right now, it's completely out of control. Their superstars have hid the underlying issues of this team so far, but if that dries up and they don't clean up their decision making on the defensive side of the puck, it's entirely possible that this Leafs team might miss the playoffs for the first time in the Matthews era.